You know what I don't give a squirt about? League of Legends. You know what I do care about, though, is animation. Good animation. I am not a League of Legends fan. I remember when League came out, and I still had friends, and they would play, and play, and laugh. It was terrible. MOBAs are just not my thing. And let's not forget about League's toxic fan base. Its community is a flaming pile of cancer topped with the doll of the 13-year-old edgelords. I think back in 2009, I was like minding my own business, rewatching Full Metal Alchemist for like the 97th time. I was far too busy to worry about some new found computer game. Now you should know by now that our forte is older classic anime. Personally, that's kind of my video game forte too. Classic shmups and fighters, arcade racers, etc. But as an anime channel, we hardly ever cover anything that just came out. So when we do, you know it's because it's something special. It's something that hits different. So take my word for it when I say that Arcane League of Legends isn't just good. It's not just great. It's not just the new bar for gaming adaptations. It's not just the best rated Netflix original series in history, but it is a new tier of animation, shot composition, direction, and the story's pretty good too. I would not tell you to watch something, let alone cover it, unless there's something worth getting out of it. And Arcane delivers like the stork does nine months after Valentine's Day, my dudes. I'm not planning on spoiling anything in the show during this video. It's too new to ruin a blind watch through with an in-depth story analysis. But if you've been on the fence about watching it, haven't heard of it, have no idea what we're talking about, or want to understand why you loved it so much, then this video is definitely for you. This is Arcane League of Legends. Let's get into it. Hello, this is Chef Michel Pisley coming to you via Hello Fresh, and tonight we will be turning this into pub style shepherd's pie. As always, we will be starting prepping and cleaning the vegetables, simple enough seeing as they are all here in exact quantities, as well as the rest of the ingredients measuring is for the week. As we all know, the old days are upon us, and the best gift, of course, is the gift of food. As you will see, Hello Fresh can make your holidays easier by cutting back on your prep and clean up. I hate thinking about things to cook. Hello Fresh does that for me and it does it weekly via delivery. It also helps me cut down on waste thanks to its proportioned ingredients and the packaging is made out of recycled content. Hmm, doesn't that look tasty? We are getting there. You should know by now that Bonsai Pop wants you to be hydrated, snacked up, and the most important thing for your health is eating healthy home cooked meals with good food. We actually asked HelloFresh for a sponsorship as both Tyler and I have used it personally ourselves. Having tried other services, I can say there is a reason it is America's number one meal kit. So, go to hellofwash.com and use code BONSAI14 for up to 14 free meals and 3 free gifts. Help out the channel, but more importantly, help out you or a loved one live a healthier, tastier, and more stress-free life. Now, doesn't this look delicious? Tastes even better in my G Gundam warm and bow. Now, thank you for your time, and back to the show. Now most of us here are fans of stories and we should know by now that a good story does not require immediate background information. Set in a world already rich with lore and characters, Arcane does not feel like a video game adaptation. In fact, I didn't even know it was uh, based on League of Legends until I started watching it and saw the title. And then I was like, I don't know if I should watch this. But then I did anyway. Now this is a story that completely holds itself up without any need to research the world or characters and that makes Arcane infinitely more accessible as a show compared to basically every other video game adaptation. It's a very Tolkien, Star Wars, Dune-esque environment with internal politics and relationships and a history that have already played out and are likely going to continue to in the game which looks like this so I don't know how much story you're getting there. Anyway, newbies like myself can come in completely ignorant of the lore and have a really good viewing experience experience that's carried by solid writing, character depth, and enhanced with like absolutely exceptional animation, like truly next level stuff. Yet at the same time, Arcane is filling in the backstory in minute detail for League players and fans. It's not just telling an already known story, it's giving a massive amount of depth and detail to characters and settings that fans have known forever. Like I even recognize some characters I'd seen on like posters and stuff at PAX or whatever back when I was a games journalist. Now usually a video game adaptation is made for specifically the fans or just children 
children. Sure, they'll do stupid shit like the Monster Hunter movie where, you know, army people get pulled through a portal so a general audience can connect with the main characters, but Arcane takes the time to fully immerse you in the world from the very first scenes. It's also not live action, which is a plus. I mean, literally, scene one gives us information on the society we're going to be immersing ourselves in. It shows the effects of war, the loss of Vi and Powder's parents, and Vander realizing that violence is maybe not always the answer, even though it looks really cool. And from the get-go, we know there's strife and struggle, and our main characters have already gone down this road of pain and sorrow to no avail. We also get that this world isn't perfect, that there's unrest that has already broken out into violence at least once and when you see the differences between Piltover and the Undercity, it's pretty damn apparent why. And this obvious dichotomy and classism between the two parts of the city serves as more than just the setting, they're also representative of one of the main themes in Arcane. And maybe it's just me, maybe it's just the times, but the theming in Arcane really does hit home. It's rare to see motifs so blatantly thrown in the open, like a five-year-old could understand this shit, yet it is so expertly conveyed that they don't seem shoved down your throat or contrived, you know what I'm saying? Piltover and the Undercity represent the imbalance that comes from mass inequality of wealth and power and prestige, often defined completely by where you happen to be, you know, tossed out as a crotch lava. It also represents the rigidity of class systems and the intense difficulty that comes from moving between a lower and upper class, yet the character Victor is an example of someone who has done that and the difficulties that come with that struggle. You know, now that he is one of the upper echelon, they don't even recognize the fact that he came from the Undercity in the first place, but that takes away from his personal identity, you know what I'm saying? There's also plenty of brilliant scenes that convey just how deep the divide between the two pieces of the same city are, from the way people talk, the complete lack of understanding between topsiders and people of the lanes, to the wealthy class considering the undercity residents as almost subhuman and disregarding all their plights and issues, including rampant drug addiction. Arcane builds the setting of a split society that's on the verge of rupture, and all that's needed is one big spark, and that spark is ironically a little girl named Powder. Now, Powder and Vi are the two main characters, their sisters, their parents died in the uprising shown in the first episode, and you can tell from how each girl acts that the trauma has hit them both very differently. Vi is overly aggressive and quick to anger, often opting to fight with her face against somebody's fist rather than think, whereas Powder is the opposite, and she's extremely anxious. I mean, there's this awesome scene in the first episode where everyone around Powder is fighting in slow motion, and it almost reminds me of a ballet dance, but what's actually happening is time is slowing down and stretching as we watch the scene through Powder's eyes. She's in like this trauma response that reminds her of the horrors she saw back in the uprising. But my point is that things don't stay the same. The characters aren't static in one moment of time. Like years pass, characters change, and the scars they earn from earlier in life carry through with massive impact later in the story. These young girls grow up, further cementing the issues they had in the past into their psyche. And it's obvious to see the world itself feels very lived in, separate, and complete. It's obvious that what we're watching here is just one small aspect of what's going on worldwide, and we even get small tastes of the outside world throughout the show to cement that idea. But I mean, look at this Breath of the Wild -ish opening shot equivalent. You just get thrown into this massive, expansive universe of which you're just seeing this tiny little glimpse, and there's going to be other parts to see in the future. To fans of League, it's probably awesome to see these places fleshed out. To newcomers, it's wild to jump into such a vast and complex world that's been around far before before we're dropped into it, and the character depth and detail is derived from the setting itself. It's also pretty nuts that all of this is the backstory of a game that looks like a World of Warcraft walking simulator. Actually, I just looked at the wiki, and apparently uh, League of Legends is literally based off a custom map of Warcraft 3, so I guess that makes a lot of sense. Also, as I was watching, I was like, this is a ripoff of so many Overwatch characters. You got Edgy Tracer, you got Young Junkrat, you got this, you know, Reinhardt type dude, you got Lucio, even a little hamster guy, and then I was like, Oh yeah, League came out in 09, and then I started stink-eyeing Blizzard through a window again. But what really brings us here is not the story, but instead the animation and artistry. Arcane is truly something to behold. It's special in this aspect far more than any other, which gives cause to watch on its own merits. It was produced by a French studio named Fortiche, which I think I'm pronouncing right. Their ability to use 3D CGI mixed with a hand-painted style in 2D animations has the art community like absolutely buzzing right now. They are going insane. Everything in the series has this poppy coloring that brings the animation to life in a way only comparable to enter the Spider-Verse, but in my opinion, if you weighed the two against each other, Arcane actually wins out. Not only is this almost nine hours of content, but it only gets better 
better as the season progresses and the action ramps up. Now, Fortiche has done work for Riot Games before, but it seems like their main focus is kind of on music videos, including an exceptional video for the Gorillas, who I would like to cover in their own video one day, just putting that out there, but also a few other bands like Imagine Dragons. Speaking of which, it's very obvious that no expense was spared for Arcane. Like, each one of these episodes must have cost millions and millions of dollars. It has a licensed soundtrack, exceptional voice acting, and the amount of detail in literally everything is absolutely insane. Now, longtime viewers of us are probably asking, is it anime? And honestly, I don't know, who cares? It certainly has inspiration from the medium, but one thing that's extremely important about anime is the attention to detail the studios provide. There are artists in the anime scene who specifically draw food, for instance. It's something most of us really take for granted, but it's a large undertaking and expense for the animation studios. This is not only present, but elevated in Arcane to a masterclass level. The eating, movement, especially facial animations are something I don't think I've ever seen before, like not even in a Pixar movie. This series moves fast, and there are super subtle facial reactions that these characters have that budgetarily are totally unnecessary, but they just add a layer of realism and life to the animation that had me double-taking more than a few times. Choosing Fortiche for this project was just a genius business move on Riot's part, specifically because of their work with music videos. A lot of people don't understand the amount of rhythm that we experience on a daily basis, but when you see it, you can notice it when it isn't present in animation. For instance, Watanabe-san gets it. You can see it in Cowboy Bebop all over the place. The ebb and flow of character movement is perfect. The way the hair moves, the way the, the clothes react. Bebop set a standard that is rarely matched. However, here in Arcane, that same feeling of rhythm is present in the movement and then added to by absolutely exceptional shot composition and direction and lighting, especially when it comes to the action, which is shown in Battle Manga Hype. The dynamic lighting, camera movement, perfect mix of close-ups, wide shots coupled with music and momentum gives these scenes so much intensity. Fortiche's use of slow motion is absolutely impeccable. It adds weight to the heavy blows or intense draws that I just found absolutely inspired. And again, everything is paired with music and the beats and the hits so perfectly that these scenes could easily be exceptional music videos in their own right. Again, it is details, 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 and when that many minor additions stack up, you get something only seen maybe once or twice in a lifetime. Animation that is truly revolutionary. Now to back up for a second, I think the appeal of live action adaptations of things is the weight and feel of real humans. Again, the natural rhythm of our bodies and voices and movements that are organic and flawlessly portrayed with no effort simply because we exist in a three-dimensional plane and atmosphere and gravity and things like that are already there for us. Think about all the extra steps it takes to get those details right in an animation. Gravity, physics, wind, weather, lighting. When a hit connects, there is an opposite reaction to the object being struck that is mathematically calculable and able to be emulated, but to do so takes a level of expertise we generally don't even consider when consuming animation. However, I truly believe that animation is the greatest form of visual media due to its timelessness, or at least its potential timelessness, and its virtually limitless potential for visual storytelling. It's part of the reason I love old anime as much as I do, because for the most part it looks and feels the same as it did when it came out. You can't really say that for live action adaptations, like, I don't know, look Spawn? Like you can watch something like Tenchi on Blu-ray and it feels like it came out yesterday. You look at Spawn and it looks like that movie came out of the toilet of like 1980 Now as for the plot, Arcane isn't exceptional, but it is exceptionally written. Like the themes within the show are not new or even uncommon, inequality, the struggle to survive versus the rich, bond between family, a cop going off script to get the job done, the struggle between two sisters, trauma of youth, clashing of two sides of the same city, failing to atone for your sins, science originally meant to do something good but being used for evil, an adopted daughter becoming a real one, the fact that nothing is ever truly pure, all of this has been done before, so it's not new but within the context of Arcane, a simple theme becomes a pretty exceptional story. Now don't get me wrong, again, I think a lot of that comes down to the way that the characters are portrayed and the way the animation is shot. But in Arcane, the League heroes feel incredibly human. They're vulnerable, failable, broken, scarred. The writers really put in the effort to make these characters human. 
Not larger than life or stronger than most, even though I guess they kind of are, but flawed too and corrupt individuals trying to survive an unfair life. They become heroes because their story arc throws them through trial after trial, trying to destroy them physically and mentally. And here's the thing, this is not a happily ever after kind of show. On the contrary, the narrative has a willingness to let these heroes fail, to let them fall victim to their vices and, you know, personal flaws, to have scars that are just too great to overcome. Like the story doesn't wrap up in nine episodes, everything doesn't just work out, it's not happy. It's not a kid's show. I think younger kids could watch it, but a lot will go over their heads and a lot more might scare them. It's pretty interesting to see mental health actually being addressed. Like Child Powder has a full on real to life panic attack in one episode that had my chest hurting. Even the main villain is a complex individual and by the end, you're really second guessing your initial opinion of him because he's not a burn it all down for shits and giggles joker type of antagonist. He has reasons for what he's doing. Political disagreements, a goal with the intention of making the Undercity a better place. He makes poor decisions because he cares about other people, which is, you know, not a big villain type thing. He's just not all evil. He's complex and has hopes and desires and priorities that all begin to interfere with one another. There's also this progression into darkness, both via the plot and the setting itself. And as the story goes on, the characters grow, everything does become darker and more intense. It's kind of real to life feeling where the older you get, things become more real and responsibility becomes greater. You begin to understand the greater consequences of your actions, you know, unless you're like an anti-vaxxer or something. Things also fall into this gray area where there's no big bad villain waiting in the wings for the heroes to rally around. The setting is falling apart, the future is uncertain, and chaos is about to ensue. And through it all, we're watching, you know, trauma mount and pile on top of both these sisters and the different ways it affects them both positively and very negatively. But what it really comes down to is what you're going to get from Arcane is something unique and exceptional, and I don't call things a masterpiece often, but artistically, Arcane is damn close. Despite a fictitious world with magic and science being obviously impossible, it does feel very authentic. It's going to make you laugh, it's, it's going to hit you in the feels, it's going to get you hype as fuck when the beat drops, and it's going to leave a pit in your stomach when it ends while you wait for season two, because I mean, damn, that ending is like... Again, we rarely make a video that's a uh, go watch this show or you're missing out, but that's really what this video is, and you, we've been wanting to cover something video game related for a really long time, and this was also not <laughs> what we were planning to use as an intro to that, but you know, that's kind of how good this is. Arcane is making history for how to create gaming adaptations. It definitely takes a budget, but you gotta realize how insanely wealthy these video game companies are, especially ones that put out things like Fortnite. Not that I would ever want to see a Fortnite series, but I'm just saying, you know, these guys, they have the money to pay the people to make something look like this. And my guess is that that quality and attention to detail is paying back in spades. Like, I would, I would guess that Riot Games is going to make money money back off of this. Especially from the goons they got to start playing League of Legends from this show, like don't do that. Or do, I don't know, I'm not your dad. But what I do know is that if future seasons keep this level of quality, we're looking at the next fantasy powerhouse show in the making, but more importantly we're looking at a breakout animation studio that can go head to head with the GOATS. You do not want to miss this project by Fortiche, you do not want to miss Arcane. go watch it. Hi everybody, thanks so much for watching, I just wanted to give a special shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use our code BONSAI14 at HelloFresh.com at checkout to get 14 free meals. That's a lot of meals, okay? Just saying. And your three free gifts. Special shout out to our lucky patron of the week, Dracula2600, and our high tier patron of the week, Calamity Cookie. We're looking to put out two more videos before the end of the year, so get hyped for that. Google us for social media, you know the deal. My name is Mike, this is Bonsai Pop. And I'll see you next time.